Right, the dark one is playing blue eyes, I believe, He right? is, he is. That is the, the probably most memorable thing about uh, looking through the uh, the deck list. Yep. Uh, the dark one is playing blue eyes. Uh, so, if you have to associate a song with this match, which one would it be? Uh, I, I, there must be a song called Battle of the Beards, and if there is, it's going to be this match. I'd, I'd say High Hopes. That would have been uh, that would have been my my song. Um, Blue Eyes, absolute fan favorite, but it is playing against one of the toughest decks in the entire format to actually get through. Um, yeah, this is actually a really a strong put together dinosaur deck. It is playing the Adamantador and the Archosaur. Uh, in it, and it's also playing the. Uh, where is he? Where is he? He's actually not playing the Mecha Phantom Beast uh, combos in here. Okay, okay. It's quite interesting, isn't it? That we've we've had you know we've had so many different versions of kind of similar similar decks. So I think even just, even, even just in these sixteen players. So I think a big reason for that is that we haven't had any of the national championships or WCQs that we'd normally have around this time where people would then refine the decks based on the tournament results and you'd see a lot of deck profiles being posted after events, which then helps create the super decks that you get to the end of the format with. Um, we haven't got that, so a lot of people have, like have like slight variations on what they are what they're playing with because they know what they, they're sort of in the right ballpark, but the, the refining yeah. process is going to be very different. Yeah, exactly. And I think you're really, yeah, you really hit the nail on the head there. That we, yeah, what usually happens is throughout these months we have each national championships, and after each national championships, there's kind of a decision. Like after the first couple of the of the big ones, you know, Germany, UK, Italy, France, of these ones, we start seeing what what is kind of in quotes the best deck. But then, as each of the nationals goes on, even the smaller ones, we start seeing that refinement, right, into the to finding the best build of, of the particular deck. And with that not happening, as you say, we're starting to we're just we're seeing that refinement that happen on you know slower. It's just going slower, different. yeah, um, than it normally would. Uh, and for anybody wondering, like, how much of a blue eyes deck is it? Is he just playing uh, one blue eyes in there, and we decide to throw you? No, he's playing. Three blue eyes, white dragons. Three blue eyes, alternative white dragon. Uh, he's also playing the ultimate creature of destruction in his trap lineup. He's he's pretty all in on this. Uh, yeah, he's this, he's pretty in on this blue eyes strat. Yeah, this this is a blue this is a blue eyes deck. This is not a. It is not some kind of token uh, token appreciation uh, to Kaiba. This is this is well and truly a tribute. It, it is it has got all the blue eyes cards in it. Yeah. It's, it, I, I'm curious to see how it comes out. Um, it'll be absolutely incredible if he wins. I think it's going to be a hard matchup to win, playing Blue Eyes against Dinosaurs. But I have been surprised more than once on this stream. So let's see yeah. how it goes. Even in just the short few hours we've been we've been streaming so far, it seems like you've been surprised quite a lot, actually. So, uh... Yeah, because uh, I, I think in best of threes, uh, more of my predictions would have gone uh, my way. But as we are playing best of one until the top four, it's... Uh, yeah, we're, we are seeing some of these uh, upsets. Yep. Well, the game's going to be ready any minute now. Let's talk a little bit more about um, about Rufio's build of, uh, of of dinosaurs here. So you said that he's not playing um, he's not playing the Mecha Phantom Beast Aurora kind of engine. That little engine. Um, is there any any other strange things though that he's that he is playing? So, when it comes to Strange, I think it's more of this uh, refining on potential combos. He's playing the Coral Dragon and the Ravenous uh, Croco Dragon Archites, I think it is, which is a new Synchro Monster from uh, Eternity Code that lets you draw cards equal to the number of non-tuners used to summon it. Archifus, uh, I think. Archifus, yeah. And then you can use that as a material for your true king of all calamities. Yeah. Really interestingly, though, he's not playing Garden Maiden, which uh, lets you get back your Coral Dragon out of the graveyard. Um, after while you're doing your uh, synchro laddering, so it's kind of, he's kind of like missing that kind of cool little extra interaction that he could be playing. Yeah, but this is this is a very well, yeah. So it's a it's a pretty refined dinosaur deck. There's like a lot of thought that's yeah. uh, gone into this. I mean, the weirdest piece of tech in here is the uh, Cali Caligo Clawcrow, uh, which I'm try I was trying to figure out exactly. 
what he was doing with this card, but uh, it's also a winged beast, so he could potentially get it off of the uh, Archie Sword if he needs to. So I'm, I'm actually interested to see how he uses that card because it seems a little bit out of place. Yeah, so that if you were to kind of pick a card that is different to all the other decks, that would be the one that you kind of zoned that's, in on. Yeah, that's one where with the rest of the deck being uh, built the way that it is, uh, I'm, I'd be curious to know exactly how that card fits in. Really weirdly though, He's only playing two Miscellaneous Saurus, which, as mentioned, is probably the best card in Advanced, uh, Advanced Constructed right now, because it literally says your opponent can't interact with your Dinosaurs. And then you get yourself the uh, Archosaur straight out of your... Uh, by banishing just the Miscellaneous Saurus from the graveyard, you get the Archosaur. And it's like, hey, you, you can't negate my Dinosaurs or do anything to them, so I'm just going to go ahead and full combo you. I don't need to worry about something Appaloosa or making sure I have a, a, a negate up, because I'm too busy doing other stuff. It's, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm curious about why you'd only go with two miscellaneous source and how the Cali, Caligo Claw Crow fits into the combo. Yeah. I, I, I So, hopping over to uh, the Dark Ones deck, he's playing one of my favorite, favorite, favorite Exceed Monsters of all time. He's playing uh, number 38, Hope Harbinger Dragon Titanic Galaxy. Yeah, that's a pretty good one, right? It uh, eats your opponent's spell cards and uh, makes some Xyz material. Yep. Very, very cool card. It was a very strong card back in the day, right? It's just yeah. uh, kind of over time, you can get similar effects for a lot cheaper than what the summoning commitments you've got to make to get that card out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the thing, right? With um, with Link summons, the, the actual levels of the monsters don't don't matter when you're well not really unless specifically written on the recipe that you need you need um you know specific levels or something but yeah for uh for titanic galaxy you need two level eight monsters which you know it's pretty it's a hard commitment for a lot of decks but for blue eyes not so much if you uh if you're using blue eyes alternative dragons effect and then turning it into titanic galaxy that's that's pretty good, you know. You don't you don't waste too much advantage if you uh, if you do it like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just a generally case of like, are the materials you're giving up uh, worth what you're getting out of it uh, in terms of like the either the end combo or a big thing? And um, two level eight monsters are generally really big to just throw at your opponent's face or do other things with these days. But yeah. Har Har Harbinger Dragon is still a very powerful effect, right? It is in a game. It's just. You could potentially be doing a lot more with your materials. Yeah. Okay. By the sounds of it, uh, I think we're gonna have to go for a small break before uh, before we get started on the final match. Um, so yeah, let's let's go for a short break, and uh, we should be back with our final match of the top sixteen for the Remote Duel Invitational. We'll see you guys very very soon.
Hello once again, we're back. Very short break. Um, as you understand, we have, you know, we have remote dueling at the moment, so a uh, few extra bits and pieces needed putting together just then. But we do now have the players, uh, which we can show just very briefly. Uh, uh, actually, no, let's just go straight to the table and we'll be able to see them there. We'll be able to see this matchup. Blue Eyes versus Dinosaurs. We're going to find out what's more superior, dragons or dinosaurs. What do you think, Matt? I don't really want to give my opinion, because I feel like that might hurt the audience. <laughs> there are some fans of the Blue Eyes deck in the audience. I don't, I don't, I don't, need, them, uh, I don't need them getting up in my, in my business. Okay. Well, Rufio with a very strong, uh, very strong 11 on the old 11 roller. is certainly higher than 7. Yeah, definitely, definitely is. Alright, so let's see how it rolls out. I have maximum credit for uh, the Dark One uh, bringing this deck to this tournament, to be honest. He's a huge fan. He's a huge fan of Blue Eyes, which you can see with the uh, signed Eric Stewart game map. <laughs> uh, have you seen his extra deck? He's, he's playing Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon in there. Uh, Blue yeah. Eyes Alternative Ultimate Dragon. Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Yeah, of course. And he has a signer... 5D's tattoo, which I just noticed. You yeah. saw this one. Yeah, he's a big fan. Uh, what can I say? Yeah, I, I, the 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 uh, the voice actors whenever they come to London, they're, they're an absolute pleasure to work with. They're, they're such such nice people. Yeah, they're great guys. Uh, Eric, Eric is a really cool guy to talk. Just generally, just talk general stuff with outside of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super good. Super duper good. So, I think uh, they're working out something here. i got a strong feeling that Rufio is figuring out what is the smallest number of moves he needs to do before he can then get back to solving his puzzle after he's won this game. Yeah, I must say, there's quite a lot of uh, random puzzle pieces going around. Oh, that'd be, that'd be a nightmare, because you just lose one of those pieces, and you get to the end of the puzzle, and you're missing out one piece. I think that's like one of the things that breaks some people, right? Yeah. Oh, that's, honestly, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of puzzles like those kind of puzzles where you sit and have to put all the pieces together. And I, I've seen those ones that are just like like a color gradient of just lots of different colors. I just think people are sadists doing those. Like, uh, I, ca I can't do it. Like, even even if I sit down and do um, a puzzle where it's like you know, really like extreme different coloration, so you can tell where the colors are going. Blah blah blah. You know, I, I just, yeah, I can't, I can't do it. We, uh, I don't I have used, the patience. And not a lifetime ago, uh, back when I was around sixteen, I used to work at a toy shop, and they actually sold a these impossible puzzles. It was like out of a brand, and it was like Smarties, and it was like it was almost impossible to figure out where the pieces went. It was for those die-hard yeah. puzzle people. Yeah. I, do you know what I have seen as well? I don't know if you've seen these, but puzzles where the pieces actually can go in more than one place. Oh, you mean all those you've... those wooden like ball things that you try to put together? No, no, no. Like like actual like puzzles, like these puzzle pieces that we're seeing here on Rufio's desk, like actual puzzle pieces where okay, he's done. Um, where where like the the pieces will fit in more than one place in the puzzle, but the puzzle won't look quite right. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so, pe so people really like to uh, to get challenged, right? Yeah. Rufio, uh, I think he's switching uh, switching headsets or something. Ah, he's having okay. some audio issues. Uh, so I think he's just grabbing himself another microphone. It's good. He's got another microphone lying around. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll probably invest in a... Uh, Stronger one, if this uh, becomes a regular feature that we're doing at the time being for some remote duels. Yeah, fortunately, I am a massive gaming nerd, so I've got a uh, I've got a reasonable gaming headset that I that I use just always. I've got a pretty good like headset for hearing. I just again, I don't really talk to people. So I don't like inviting people into my home, even if it's through audio. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's like, stay out of my castle, peasants. Uh, or, I mean, teammates. Uh, please, let's win this game. Don't, don't all random all mid. You know, that usual yeah. stuff. 
So very shortly here, we're going to be getting on, uh, getting on with the uh, final match of the top sixteen. So far, what, what we've seen, Matt, you know, we've seen quite a lot of, uh, of shockers. What, what, are, what, what are you uh, thinking about for the winner? You still, you still, so you're, you're, you're like top one person has gone out now. So Slash went out, but Schattenspieler seems to be your close second. What, what are you feeling about for, uh, for I this tournament? I about Schattenspieler, but looking at uh, uh, Rufio's deck. His deck is looking like a really, really good dinosaur deck. Um, as soon as I figure out how his Kali Clawcrow fits into the deck, um, then I'll feel a little bit more confident. He's got a strong deck, so it's not a done deal. Uh, but Shattenspieler definitely looks really, uh, looks really strong. Yeah, based on how he just played that played that last game out. I mean, you know me. I like to go with uh, some a little bit of a wild prediction, and uh, I'm 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 a big fan of these zombies that we saw. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was, I thought that was a pretty cool deck. Uh, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how that how yeah, that the, uh, plays out. The Yu-Gi-Oh nice guy. He's uh, uh, he's he's going to be he's going to be it for me. I have that a Doc Seven with the uh, the Grand Maju deck because that that was <laughs> it was a pretty commanding victory over Slash to be honest. Macro Cosmos, what can you say? Yeah. I mean, it's it's the thing, thing is people are gonna say oh yeah Drew's one copy of my cousins but it's not like that was his only like you know th there were he, he's also playing dimensional fisher and other kind of banishing related cards where he would have been able to lock his opponent down quite heavily so yeah all right I think it's game time now so we're gonna be uh, ready to see what happens yeah all right. Let's see. So uh, I remember, yeah, Rufio won the die roll, so he's going to get to play first, and he's going to start for the terraforming. Just set out the land, the land of the prehistorics. I don't know. My, I'd probably think he'd be going for a straight unit diagram, to be honest. No, he is going for a Lost World. Yeah, I'll, I'll let the players play. That's uh, probably a safer thing. <laughs> Thank you. Know what? It would have been really hard. Oh, he, he does play Dragon Dogram. I just wanted to double check that uh, <laughs> before I was like, oh, oh, actually, yeah. If you'd have pulled that out, then uh, yeah, the soul eating Oviraptor. I've definitely learned over the years uh, that trying to predict players playing is really difficult. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you just summon the Ash Blossom that you needed to keep in your hand to Ash Blossom the card of the Mize off the top of the deck to win target YCS, and you just don't. Just normal summon the Ash Blossom. Yeah. There are times where that play is a play. Yeah. It costs you a YCS, but you can make that move. Yeah. You you know, not going to stop you. You're allowed to do that. <laughs> I, I'm really curious, because I vaguely remember what the card does, but I don't remember the text on it. The, the ultimate creature of destruction. No, oh, I got to, I got to it, look that one up. Isn't uh, this just on theme Miraphos? No, it prevents your blue eyes from okay, being interacted yeah, with. I think target a blue eyes monster you control, and then this turn it's unaffected by card effects, apart from its own. It can't be destroyed by battle, and any opponent's monster that it destroys is destroyed at the end of the damage step. And while the ultimate creature of destruction card is in your graveyard, if you normal summon a blue eyes white dragon, you can set it. But then it gets banished, so you get to use it twice, essentially. That's pretty good. So yeah, we see the Oviraptor. That's a token for the Lost World being put into play, not just a yep. random face down, face down monster. Down monster. Yeah. yeah. Miscellaneous Saurus. Uh, this is going yep. to now protect all dinosaurs from being interacted with, and we're going to see it banished for one of the most impactful cards to come out of the turn to code. The Adaman, uh, Adam, Adamandord Archisaur. Bubble Croc, I think you'd find his names. You know what? I really wish we'd have pitched that name to <laughs> Kevin, because it's just so much easier to say. And that's going to go ahead and search for double evolution pills. Bubble Croc. Um, yeah, so we see the double evo pill. Such a powerful card. I mean, we've we've seen this over the past couple of years, just making you know popping up in various decks, well, mostly dinosaur decks. But uh, yeah, you know, kind of cropping up every now and again. It's really strong. 
it's, it's a really good card, but it's the fact that you can actually search for it, which makes it a strong consideration. Whereas before, it's like, yeah, uh, it's nice when you draw it and you're in exactly the right situation, but now that I don't have to worry about that. Uh, in the matchups where it's not good, I can just leave it. In, in the matchups where like it's going to push me far ahead, I can wrap it. I mean, it's pretty much the only search target you're playing in this deck, aside from the the weird Kali, Kaligo Clawcrow, because the Adamantor can also search for a Winged Beast or Reptile or uh, another type of card, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, Overtex Cotalus, Miscellaneous Solarus, and Soul Eating Oviraptor, th those three really kind of, in my in my opinion, put the punch in, in with the, the dinosaurs. When when those three got introduced, really started to... Uh... Yeah, Soul Eating Oviraptor uh, is just an absolute crazy Yu-Gi-Oh card. Yeah. Um, it's, it gets a lot done, and Baby Sarasaurus is just a relic of uh older Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh back in back in the day when that card was uh for play, you just didn't have the monsters that you wanted to get for it. In fact your ways of even getting it destroyed were letting your opponent attack into it or attacking into your opponent's monster. Yeah. Uh, it does look like um Rufio was he destroyed a non dinosaur in his hand, which allowed yeah, him to them, yeah. The, yeah. So um he had to rewind a bit there, but still looks like he's got some stuff to play. Always a good thing, right? Yeah. I haven't seen a baby Sarasaurus getting uh, destroyed yet. No, I don't think he's got it by the looks of it. Do you see IP Mascarena, though? He's messed up his starting turn. Yeah. Because he should have been... Able to get his baby Sarasaurus, uh, get that destroyed with the Archisaur, um, and then he'd have been able to do additional summons. So I think he's, unless you know, unless he's uh, just going a different. Yeah, I think he's completely messed up the turn. I IP pass is a bit weird. Hmm. I see the chat yeah. going mental with the uh, Dino DNA. <laughs> <laughs> Me right now. <laughs> and that's a good start. <laughs> IP pass with no way to make a link summon. Oh I'm talking I'm talking about the blue eyes. That's a good start to a blue eyes turn. Getting the old uh, the old melody out, strumming the guitar. While discarding the white stone of ancients. Very uh very good. This Okay, this this might be another upset. I'm not gonna lie, but yeah. you gotta remember they're all losing 500 attack from the lost world, and there's the ash blossom for the uh, the melody. Yeah, and cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, just an FYI, he is playing three DDS blue eyes white dragons. Yeah, Eric Stewart actually uh, he he plays a bit, right? Um, the guitar, which is actually one of the coolest things about. Uh, yeah. The King of Dragons, uh, the fact that he has a triple blue eyes guitar and stuff like that, it's kind of a yeah. minor little homage nods. Yeah, no, he's, actually, he's, he's actually a really, really successful like singer in a band, and yeah, he plays guitar as well. He's, he's actually really good. He's really, really good. He does like, kind of, uh, like country style music. I don't know, I pro you probably shoot me for saying that, but I think that's the kind of style, but it's, yeah, he's got a really good voice. There, he reveals the blue eyes to summon the alternative. I just, I wouldn't dare play DDS blue eyes. <laughs> this, this, this is happening. I, uh, I, I, I couldn't pick up a DDS blue eyes for more than about a second. It'd have to live in a binder. <laughs> the Lost World token, uh, it's, you can only target the token, right? Uh, you can, if there, if one's in place, so you can't like blue eyes alternative blow up the mascarine, mascarina. Yeah, I think, I think so. I need to really, I need to reread Lost World. Lost World is uh, a super ultra one. Yeah, Lost World. Yeah, yeah. They can't. Ta they can. They can only target tokens. Yeah. So he couldn't use its effect to destroy the masquerade. He'd have to destroy his own. Yeah. Token. Yeah, so you, you simply can't target monsters on the field 
accept tokens. Yeah, so he would have to he would have to destroy that. There you got the uh, Hasselberry uh, backstory uh, copy and pasta going on here. <laughs> <laughs> was that really how I remember Hasselberry having dinosaur DNA? But I, I, is that really what happened? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, to be honest, I'm uh, I'm not on the chat right now, so I would have to read it. <laughs> what what is the story, Matt? Tell us what is the story. Uh, so the, the the copy of pasta is saying uh, a few years ago, I had a routine dig for dinosaur fossils. A landslide broke out and nearly broke, I nearly broke my leg in two. They had to operate quickly, so they used a dinosaur bone. They found to save my leg. Ever since then, I've had what they call dinosaur DNA. The doctor says it makes me stronger than the average chip. <laughs> you know what? That actually sounds quite plausible. I did watch GX recently, and I think that might be that might be right. Yeah, I think that might be right. He wasn't like my favorite uh, dinosaur style deck that was actually played. It wasn't even a dinosaur deck. It was the fossils played by uh, Crocodile Jim. Like he was yeah. one of my favorite of the Academy Duelists that uh, that showed up. Just because uh, he wore a crocodile on his back the whole time. A live crocodile. Yes, and yeah. it had a name, but I can't remember what it was. It was she. Uh, sure it was like Sheila or something. Yeah, he was Australian. They definitely played to that. Uh, yeah, the, his cards actually got voted there. Japan ran a, um, a con essentially a contest where you could vote on which character's cards you wanted made from the anime that was never released before oh, yeah. into the TCG, and Jim Crocodile actually won. Uh, so his cards uh, got picked up and made into real cards, and they got upgraded as well because they were a little bit old uh, in their initial yeah. in their initial design. I think they're pretty good now, and they're rock monsters, so. That's kind of a good thing, right? At this uh, this day and I'm age. Tr I'm trying to remember whether they're released yet or not. <laughs> they are not released before you reveal any information, you fool. No, I don't think they are released. Not not the TCG. We haven't released them yet. Yeah, but <laughs> blue eyes. I actually can't see what the link monster is, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. All right, He's I'm pretty his... sure F Furio. Rufio. Fu Rufio, uh, Rufio. Why am I saying Ru right, Rufio? <laughs> it's is, it's just six letters, Matt. You got you got this. It's yeah yeah. It's, I am really that bad at reading. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so Rufio, he he could probably turn this around now because the, the, for the having a blue eyes opening, um, that was not enough to to close the dual life. Uh, even after his really questionable first turn. Questionable. That's a good uh, good word to, to to use. I like to think of it as political. <laughs> Very yeah. political way of saying that. Yep. Yeah. So. All right now, let's just do it right this time. <laughs> yeah. Attempt to. Yeah, so let's see where he's going from here. He's uh, chucked the giant Rex into his graveyard. When that card's banished, he gets to special summon it. And here's the evolution pill, which is going to do just that. Yeah, I must say, giant Rex was another one of those cards that got added to the the pool of dinosaurs over the giant years. Giant Rex really is made a good. fantastic card. Is I it really even? Like it. Is it once per turn? I don't yeah, think it yeah, is. Yeah, it is once per turn. You is can't, it? You okay. can't just keep banishing it and getting back. That would be a little bit nutty. The oh. old wood creature of destruction! Yeah, he actually has it. <laughs> Alright, so... <laughs> Amazing. So, his blue eyes is essentially indestructible, and if he attacks it with anything, um, the monster dies in the in the end of the damage step. <laughs> But, but as of right now, that blue eyes alternative dragon is uh, unstoppable. Yeah, yeah you, here's the really awkward thing, right? You can't attack into it with your ultimate conductor Tyranno, because it does nothing. And if you don't, he is going to destroy your ultimate conductor Tyranno next turn just with its effect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
and so yeah, you can't. You also can't because your blue eyes is unaffected by everything. You can't even. Uh, you're not gonna be able to flip it down, uh, and the Nightmare Phoenix can't go face down either. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's. Uh... I, I don't know what to say. That that is yeah, it's uh, it's entirely invulnerable. This is like a, a minor inconvenience, though, I think. But it's actually kind of funny that it's uh, gotten to this situation. Uh, I don't know why it's getting flipped face down. Uh, it's unaffected by that monster's unaffected by card effects except its own. So and it's treated as a blue eyes while it's on the field, right? Oh, okay. Apparently, he changed something. He changed to. He actually oh, changed oh. to the trap card. Oh, he just activated the trap card rather than waiting for his opponent to activate it. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't have pushed that button that early. Yeah. That's that's rough. That's an oopsie. That yeah. would that would have been a pretty epic, uh, pretty epic way to win the game, actually. Yeah. I, I thought. I thought. Yeah, I thought that he didn't do that. Yeah, the Dark Ones, stop trying to steal vic defeat from the Jewels of Victory. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Yeah, so now we're going to see some dinosaurs run over a bunch of stuff. Yeah, still, he get if he summons a Blue Eyes next turn, he can um, he can just set it, set the trap from from his graveyard. Yeah, he's still got opportunities to um, get back in, but he would have been in just uh, such a strong position to clean up next turn there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Some life point errors. <laughs> Rufio yeah. just took his took damage <laughs> from his from his own attack. I'm so confident. No I'm, gonna, I'm gonna order my dinosaurs to attack my own life points. <laughs> yes, yeah. come here and nom on my arm. That's kind of what that's kind of what like Yugi's moves. Like, ah, oh, okay, I can't win the game by attacking my opponent, but I gotta attack myself. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> just proceeds to punch himself in the face and somehow wins the game. <laughs> Make myself so angry <laughs> that I can then uh, win. Um, yeah, good. Uh, that's a that's an old school card right there. We see. Uh, I think it's Lagia. Yes, Evil Czar Lagia, back from the dinosaur rabbit in Zector days. Uh, that's going to negate one card effect from his opponent by detaching two materials. Can negate summons as well, which makes it really, really good. Yep. I do remember that there is a white stone of ancients in the uh, in the graveyard as well. So can you resolve that? Uh, uh, no, uh, well, no, I, it. no, I don't think he did. Nah, that's another oopsie. Uh, he's got two cards in hand, and he's uh, activating Dragon Shrine, so he gets to send himself a monster from his deck to the graveyard. Yeah. And Lagia immediately review smells something suspicious and decides we're just going to negate that. Yeah. Please summon the second Blue Eyes Alternative Dragon. Well, we do see the uh, <laughs> the the White Stone of Ancients to get back the Blue please, Eyes. Alternative. Please, please just summon that again. Yeah, that's exactly what he's going to do. <laughs> and they get back the ultimate creature of destruction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And nuke the Tyrannosaurus yeah. Rex. Yeah, that's that's exactly what's happening, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Find it, Dark One! Find it! <laughs> Find the point! Alright. <laughs> oh, oh my... <coughs> okay. Okay. Okay, yeah, he's gotta, he's gotta flip the boys. <laughs> he's gonna flip it down, but it was, it was short-lived. <laughs> Wait, uh, that's not a... the dinosaur ultimate conductor trident. Is that to destroy a dinosaur? Or is it just a card? Um... I'm gonna have to check. I'm just in stitches here. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yeah, it's just one monster. Oh, uh, okay, so yeah, you can destroy his Lagia. His Lagia is a dragon, because the evil Zoras, uh evolve from reptile to dragon. Ah, I feel bad. Because, oh. again, all of these like, potential epic comebacks, 
Be just shut down by dinosaurs being dinosaurs. Yeah. Thwarted. I, I mean, this is the beauty of uh, Blue Eyes though, right? There's always that comeback of having another alternative dragon or just being able to, you know, Silver's cry out a Blue Eyes and just start beating stuff up because they're sometimes, so big. Yeah, sometimes 3,000 stuff points is just big enough. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we, we knew this was going to be uh, a really uphill... In fact, it's, it's like the Panic at the Disco song High Hopes where he's uh, trying to walk up the side of a building. That's kind of what Dark One is trying to do right now. And he's got he's, he got he got quite far up there, so uh, but I'm not sure if he's gonna be able to turn this around. Yep. Looks like we're having uh, I wouldn't say a life point dispute, but there's some uh... I think the dark one could have won this, right? If he did not miss I think uh, the Dark One, uh, if he had not just flipped his ultimate creature of destruction uh, randomly, he would have cleared that ultimate conductor to right out, and he'd just be like laying the smack down right now. Yeah, exactly. If he'd have chained it, um, that'd have worked. That'd have worked out, and he'd have been able to summon another alternative the following turn, and then set the ultimate uh, the, the ultimate. Um, Creature of Destruction again. Yeah, and he's now got a second blow in his hand. It, I mean, he's still got he's still got potential plays, right? But the Ottawa Conductor Tyranno, if a third alternative dragon came out, you wouldn't be able to flip the dank. You could chain your Ottawa Creature of Destruction. Yeah. And then I'm thinking, like, if, and then during um, during his turn, when he summoned the blue, when he summoned the second alternative. Both of them would have been on the board, and then he'd been able to flip the the one that had its manual change left to then destroy the ultimate conductor Tyranno. Yeah, and he just passes with a Link Rebo, and uh, Rufio now gets to just have a giant dinosaur and still still in play. Yeah, and giant dinosaurs, they're pretty good at the moment. All the way conductor Tyranno is just. Such a fantastic card. It's so easy to summon, and it's so good at closing out games as a finisher. And particularly, that it's uh, it's straight. Uh, you can actually get it out of the main deck as well. I, I don't know. Would can Old Conductor try to be a better card if it was a level eight synchro monster? I don't believe so. Or if it was even a fusion monster, it would be. Yeah, no. It's just perfect. The kind of the way it is, almost. Yeah. No, he's gonna yeah trade the um, trade the link repos. So if he tributes the link repo, link repo goes to zero attack, and then the only one can talk to try to hits him. Yeah, uh, that's gonna get him. So wow, that's it. Rufio, oh, Rufio, Rufio literally decided to put on a, a blindfold, and I saw, I tell you what, I looked out my window after he messed up that first turn, and I swear I saw five very well dressed Gambia men carrying a box ready to start dancing. Like they were watching, they were watching that game. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna totally agree with that. So Rufio wins. Uh, just to uh, totally clarify there, and that is it for the top sixteen. Yeah. Matt, it's, it's it's been a roller coaster. It's been a real roller coaster of emotions. I feel like I've been very invested in some of these games in the ways that they've they've been uh, going. I mean, yeah. that was. That was that was kind of tricky to watch because I thought that was going to be so much more one-sided uh, than it actually ended up being. And uh, yeah, just uh, Rufio's mistake almost put him on the wrong end of a Blue Eyes deck uh, during yeah. this, to this uh, tournament. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I just I'm a bit speechless. We've seen a lot of uh, a lot of upsets, <laughs> considering. The kind of uh, you know such a such a limited pool of uh, of decks. I feel like we've seen a lot of upsets for the for the matter. Maybe you know. I guess you know what we were talking about the whole re the ref refination is that even a word? The refining the refinement of uh, of the, the the decks that uh, that you know we we 
kind of know the top ones just hasn't happened yet you, you know they're, they're really they're really struggling to to be consistent against what seemingly these rogue decks are just able to continue the consistency even though they're not as strong yeah i mean it's there is some level of refinement going on uh, there's certainly like lots of groups where people are talking about it. it's just uh, happening a little bit slower when you've got less huge tournaments and people doing deck profiles uh, typically, these guys that we're having in the, uh, this tournament are uh, doing deck profiles directly afterwards to uh, reveal the content. But yeah, it's just the refinement's happening a bit slower. And people that are not potentially going to locals every week is uh, getting a little bit rusty when playing with uh, playing with their cards. Uh, but there's been a couple a couple of whoopsies being uh, being made, even though the general concepts seem very very strong. Yeah, uh, from from these deck builds. Yeah, it's super just super interesting to see. Um, and we, you know, it's not like we lost all of our rogue decks in the top sixteen. That we've still got quite a few interesting ones that are sticking around. Yeah, absolutely. Um, looking forward to seeing. I, I, I really want the zombie. I really want our zombie player to go a little bit further, but yeah, I, I'm not convinced that he will. But then I, I am open to be surprised by that. Yeah. So um, I'm going to take a look at the the bracket. Um, um, what, so we have Okram still left uh so it's going to be okram versus armageddon duelist i think it's our and next the, game the pr probably will be yeah so we have actually it's gonna be farfa oh yeah not uh, yeah i don't know why i said okram yeah Paying. farfa versus armageddon uh at a Mancipator versus armageddon's Armageddon's Shadol. Okay. No, Julio. Julio, not not Armageddon. No, not Armageddon. Okay. I am. I think I, I just got. I, I I read out our losers instead of our winners. <laughs> oh, you get you're getting me in trouble there, Luke. Uh, so we're going to be having Sorry. an Adamantipater mirror on the next roll. So it'll be interesting.